Remember the Milgram studies of the 1960s? They're back in the news just in time for Independence Day. They're an excellent reminder of the strongest social impulse, the impulse to obey authority. Welcome to Collateral. All right, teacher, would you take the test and be seated in front of the shock generator, please, in the next room? This machine uh, generates electric shocks, and when you press one of the switches all the way down, the learner gets a shock. For example, in the first line, you read blue, boy, girl, grass, hat. Now, after you've read the four choices, the learner pushes one of the switches on the board in front of him, and the number he has selected will light up in this box, one, two, three, or four. If he were to indicate the wrong answer, you would say wrong. Then tell him the number of volts you're going to give him. Then give him the punishment. Now, each time he gives a wrong answer, you move up one switch on the shock generator. In July of 1961, three months after the start of the trial of Nazi war criminal Adolf Eichmann, Stanley Milgram conducted arguably the most well-known and controversial public experiments of the 20th century. His topic, the dynamics of obedience. Specifically, Milgram sought to determine whether ordinary people would obey instructions that resulted in the injury of another person because those instructions came from an authority figure. I mean, who's going to take the responsibility if anything happens to that gentleman? I'm responsible for anything that happens here. Continue, please. Uh, there's a lot of them here, you know. He's got a heart condition there. You want me to go? Just continue, please. <laughs> Please continue, teacher. Neely, you're gonna get a shot. 180 volts. Many people believe that Milgram's findings can't be applied to our time since allegedly people are more distrustful of authority. But recent studies have shown that to be false. The British Channel 4, for just one example, recently replicated core elements of the Milgram study in 2006. The results were virtually identical. Incorrect. 450 volts. You promise he's not. It, it, it won't. Please continue with the procedure. No, you, you say it hurts, but it's because it's like it says they're dangerous in a shot. It'll be all right. Yeah. Please continue. I think we'll discontinue the experiment. It's important to remember that Milgram did not expect the results that his experiments delivered. Contrary to expectations, it was found that almost two-thirds of those tested were willing to administer and continue administering what they believed were extremely painful shocks right up to the 450-volt threshold. This despite loud screams coming from the learner. Milgram then refined this study in a number of ways to gain information about the variables that affect obedience, like proximity and modeling behavior. In one version, the experimenter phoned in the orders from another building, and obedience went down considerably. In another version, the learners were brought into the same room as the teachers, and obedience went down again. Perhaps most importantly, Milgram found that resistance breeds resistance. In studies where multiple teachers were tested simultaneously, one teacher disobeying the experimenter made it more likely that others would follow suit. The experiment requires you to continue. Yeah, even so, I don't think I'm going to do any more. Because of the problem from generalizing from the lab to the real world, Milgram's findings will always remain somewhat controversial. But it's clear that under fairly definable circumstances, ordinary people can readily become cogs in an evil process. Just any response, mate, come on. Wild guess. Please continue. 345 volts, if you're still with me, I'm sorry. The impulse to obey is so powerful that it overrides moral teaching. Even more disturbingly, those who behave worst are more likely to deny responsibility for their actions, preferring to believe it was the experimenter's orders that were responsible for what they did. 450 volts. 450 volts. 450. Beyond the dynamics of obedience, the experiment should also get us thinking about the concept of identification. Before the study began, the experimenters treated the teachers as important participants in a study benefiting science. No doubt this helped with the positive identification the teachers had with the experimenters. Most of us can relate. After all, 
Why do presidential candidates spend so much time shaking hands? Because the one-to-one -one contact makes the person on the other end of the handshake feel important. We should remember the effects of this kind of identification at a time when the corporate media spends a disproportionate amount of time on the personal characteristics of presidents and candidates. They're presented less as political leaders than they are as mildly annoying family friends or visitors to our living rooms. The media will ask questions like, which one would you rather have a beer with? Who cares? Positive and personal identification with the authority figure was critical in the Milgram studies. Today, that same identification makes it hard for many people to accept that our country's leaders have betrayed us. When our leaders use noble-sounding language and speak of a desire to protect the nation, we identify with that. But when their true motives and all their ugliness become obvious, well, as Milgram put it, few people have the resources needed to resist authority. Hope to see you next week. If in this study, an anonymous experimenter could successfully command adults to subdue a 50-year-old man and force on him painful electric shocks against his protests, one can only wonder what government, with its vastly greater authority and prestige, can command of its subject.